the histories we find when the Lord appears within this world are especially focused on the Lord's relationships with his loving devotees. Sri Sri Radha Madhava made himself visible to this world through the prayers and the compassion of Srila Prabhupada, our beloved Guru Maharaj. It was by Srila Prabhupada's desire that today millions and millions of people every year are coming to see and receive the blessings of Sri Sri Radha Madhava. At first, Srila Prabhupada had them in a little straw hut in an isolated rice paddy in Sri Mayapur Dham. At that time, he asked Janani Vas Prabhu to be their pujari and never leave them. But it was Srila Prabhupada's desire because it was the prayer of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda that the whole world come to Sri Mayapur to learn the Yuga Dharma, how to awaken unmotivated, uninterrupted prema bhakti from the heart by raising one's arms and crying out with great humility the holy names of Krishna. deeply indebted to Janani Vas Prabhu and Pankajangari Prabhu for dedicating their lives totally. Can you imagine? Janani Vas Prabhu is from the country of the United Kingdom or England who for about 200 years ruled over India He came here in 1970 and has never once left India since then. Not even to go home to the UK. His family has to come to Mayapur to see him. <laughs> that is how seriously he took the desire of his spiritual master. And how seriously did Srila Prabhupada take the desire of his spiritual master? When finally it was possible for him to go abroad to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission, he was 70 years old. And we all know the story of all the difficulties and how even at that age and beyond, he circled the world several times a year. So the, the leelas between Radha Ras Bihari and Srila Prabhupada, Radha Madhava and Srila Prabhupada, Radha Gokulananda and Srila Prabhupada, Radha Govinda and Srila Prabhupada, so many of these mortis within the world how Prabhupada gave his life to serve them and to bring the whole world to their lotus feet. 
And we heard from Pankajangari Prabhu so many beautiful jewels of wisdom about how Krishna is the master of all energies and he, he is the controller of all energies. Krishna says this material, this divine energy of mine, consisting of the three modes of nature, which means material energy, is very difficult to overcome. But one who takes shelter of me can easily cross beyond it. Material energy is like a vast ocean. On our own, to cross this ocean is impossible. But for one who takes shelter of Krishna, who is the controller of all controllers, Sarveshwareshwara, he reduces the quantity of water in the ocean of material existence to that contained within a small hoof print of a calf. So anyone, literally anyone can cross the hoof print of a calf. Even an infant baby who hasn't learned how to talk or walk can crawl and cross over that hoof print. Even an ant can swim across it. <laughs> In other words, Krishna is telling us that anyone, everyone, no qualification, disqualification, just take shelter of me and I will make it possible. Mayadhyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam. Krishna is the controller of material existence. It's under his control. But the only way that we can cross over it, and what Krishna is saying when he tells that it's no more difficult than crossing over the hoof print of a calf, we should understand what this really means. Because when we take shelter of Krishna, Krishna reveals himself. Anandam buddhivaradhanam. He reveals in himself the supreme opulences of beauty that attract our hearts and give us the bliss that we're always searching for. Param drisvani vartate. Because Krishna's beauty, Krishna's qualities, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's abode, association with Krishna's devotees, Krishna's beautiful form and the Murti, and especially all these things which are contained within Krishna's name are all attractive. When we take shelter of Krishna, accordingly Krishna reveals himself to us. Krishna tells that all the beautiful things in this world that are so enchanting to our minds are but a tiny little spark of his unlimited splendor. All beautiful things within the entire creation, all the beautiful things, all the attractive things which are in, within the entire creation, that means within all planets of all universes, put them all together and they are not even comparatively like one spark of a sun ray compared to the unlimited sun planet of Krishna, their origin, their source. What is the attraction of Krishna? <clears throat> Some people, they just can't, com they can't conceive that anyone could be so unlimitedly, eternally, attractive. So therefore, they come to the conclusion 
that if the absolute is unlimited, the, it must have no qualities, must be impersonal. In that impersonal existence, we are freed from the charms of this material existence. Maybe temporarily, because we're all looking ultimately for love. But in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, imagine this. We are enchanted by things in this world, people, things, experiences, positions. Some, sometimes we are in, so infatuated it takes away our intelligence. Imagine what's available in the heavenly planets. Don't imagine. <laughs> Just, which is, Pankajangari Prabhu said that in Kali Yuga, the demigods don't even come down to this earth planet to go to the bathroom. So can you imagine what it's like there? And add everything up in all the earth planet, all the heavenly planets, and all the creation. It's not even a spark, a single sun ray compared to Krishna's beauty, Krishna's attractive personality. So yes, this material existence with all its temptations is like a vast ocean. But when you become attracted to Krishna, his beautiful lotus-like eyes, his moon-like face, his three-fold bending form, he plays on his flute, with his lotus-like lips, with his hair decorated with a peacock feather and malati flowers, Vajayanti Mala, Doti, bright like lightning. His toenails are shining more brightly than millions of suns and moons. His teeth are like rows of jasmine and pearls. His eyebrows are like the bows of Cupid nose is like a freshly bloomed sesame flower. He has shark-shaped earrings dangling very, very gracefully on his beautiful, beautiful ears. When that Krishna glances upon us and the love of his heart manifests through that glance to penetrate our soul, and awaken our love, then Krishna's unlimited oceanic beauty and attraction makes all the pleasures of this world as insignificant as the amount of water in the hoofprint of a calf. And whoever becomes attracted to Krishna with love can easily cross beyond it, effortlessly cross beyond it. In the sadhana bhakti stage, when we are somewhere between loving Krishna and still trying to enjoy selfish pleasures, it's a struggle. Tapodivyam putra kayena satvam. But that struggle is there for a purpose so that we could really take things seriously. The struggles, if we are sincere, will help us to actually take shelter. Krishna, I need you. Not just as a formal religious function. I need you 24 hours a day. And Pankajangari Prabhu was explaining that Krishna is making this offering. He comes to this world again and again just to invite us back into his loving pastimes, to attract our minds 
away from birth, old age, disease, and death. And he gives us so many opportunities. He gives us the opportunity of the holy name at every moment to chant and connect. He gives us the opportunity of the association of so many wonderful devotees. If we just grateful, we can see the good in them. When you're grateful in heart, Krishna reveals to you the, the blessings he's giving. If you're not grateful, even though the blessings are there, you cannot recognize them. Because Krishna pre he reveals himself. He reveals everything according to how we approach him. Sitting in this temple today before Sri Radharani and Gopinath, not statues, but Krishna himself and Sri Radha herself. And Gornitai are dancing for them right in front of our eyes. This is the spiritual world. Can you imagine? They're not marble. They are marble. But Krishna, as, as the two divine brothers were saying, Krishna being the controller of material energy can manifest himself through material energy in full. Not only can he, but he does. Just to give us the chance to perfect our lives. How kind. So available. Anybody in any house could put a photo or a deity of Krishna and have Krishna living right in their house. We read about some sages. They carry Krishna around with them wherever they go in a little bag and around their neck. And Krishna's in the temple so that thousands of people could come together to learn to love each other while loving him and inspire one another. He's not different than the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavad Gita. Here is Krishna's words directly with the, with the commentaries of the great acharyas from up, throughout time. And they're sitting right in our homes. We can carry them with us if we want. Srimad Bhagavatam is non different than Krishna. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam with an actual grateful and attentive heart, it is non different than being right there 5,000 years ago on the bank of the Ganga, hearing Shukadeva Goswami speak to Maharaj Pariksha. Because transcendental sound is not limited to time or place. It's divine. The sound vibration is eternal. Just by reading, yes. It's just a matter of taking the mood of parikshit. I've told the story of my god sister Kunti Devi she was dying of cancer, last stages. Her complexion was yellow, teeth were rotting, her spine disintegrated, couldn't sit up, couldn't walk, just laying in a bed, just propped up, emaciated, could hardly eat anything. And she was going to die real soon. Very painful. She was so, if she tried to hold up a book, her arms, her bones were so brittle that just holding up a book may break her bones. She, could, she had no strength to hold a book to read. Now, most people in this room, we have so much strength, we can hold a book and read. But we have no time to read. But if you were in that situation, you would give anything to hold up a book and read. We don't appreciate what we have. So someone got her a computer. 
put all Prabhupada's books in the computer. So all she had to do was move her little skinny fingers on, the, on some keys and she could put any page of Prabhupada's books in front of her. So I came in, she was reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And she was smiling, she was just in ecstasy. I said, I'm not in the bank, I'm, I'm not, people think I'm on my deathbed. I'm on the bank of the Ganges. I'm in the bank of the Ganges, sitting right next to Maharaj Pariksit, hearing Shukadev Goswami. I've never been so fortunate in my life. I've read these books so many times, but never, ever, ever have I heard my Guru Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, speaking to me so personally, so directly, right to my heart, with so much compare and compassion and love. Never have I experienced this. I would not trade the position I'm in today for anything or anyone else in the world. She, she had her good health in her day. She had so many nice situations. And she sees so many other people in the world. Even devotees dancing in ecstasy in kirtan. She said she would not change her position for anything or anyone because she was feeling Prabhupada's personal love for her and she could hear Shukadev Goswami speaking. And within her heart she could see Krishna clearer, more intimately than ever before because she had a sincere and grateful heart if only we can just un appreciate what we've been given, Krishna will reveal himself. Yes, we chant the holy names, we take it for granted, because we can do it any time. But if even once we could really appreciate the gift of the holy name and chant with that gratitude and really take shelter that one recitation of the holy name, Krishna will reveal himself. And the ocean of material existence becomes a little hoofprint of a calf again. Hey Krishna, Karuna Sindhu. Krishna is Karuna Sindhu. He's an ocean of kindness, an ocean of compassion an ocean that has no bottom and has no shores, an ocean that is not salty, an ocean that is the sweetest nectar, unlimited nectar. It's all pervading. That is Krishna's kindness. And because Krishna is Karuna Sindhu, even in this place of this material world, where people who have rejected him, who are chronically envious of him, who are accustomed and habituated to hurt each other, Aham Bija Pratapita, every living being is the child of Krishna. How could we love Krishna and be disrespectful or cruel to anyone else. But yet, birth after birth after birth, you know, it's, and as, an, as a tiger, you were seeing Krishna's little child, the deer, and jumping and putting your teeth through its neck and then eating it alive. Hare Krishna. Krishna's watching you. It's my, it's my, it's my dear, dear. You're, e <laughs> you're eating it. And as human beings, even our own family members, we're fighting, we're hurting. Sometimes we're eating others. <laughs> Krishna's so kind. Karuna Sindhu, an ocean of kindness. Such an ocean, it's unlimited and it's unending. No matter how many times 
you offend God, God is still willing to come here to give you another chance, to call you back home to an eternal life of unlimited bliss. That is Karuna Sindhu. Made himself so available in so many ways. How creative. Who could be more creative than the creator? So many deities, and they're available, can put them right, could put him right in your own home. Come to the temple. Srimad Bhagavatam, there he is, his words, Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Every devotee is a murti of Krishna. In the sense that every devotee, because they're dedicated to Krishna, they are revealing Krishna. And the holy names, Krishna makes himself so easily available. And as Pankajangari Prabhu was saying, we have to take advantage with grateful hearts, not waste time. Time is short. And even in Krishna says, time I am. And actually every single moment in any situation is absolutely the perfect opportunity to take shelter of Krishna and be perfect. This we have to have faith in. This is the reality. Whatever the situation, it is a perfect opportunity to take shelter of Krishna. Whether things are very good, and everything's so good, Krishna, I'm so grateful to you, it's yours. And we can go back to Godhead. Or if things are so bad, Krishna, things are just so bad and I am so helpless, I take shelter of you, I am yours. Bhakti Vinod Thakur prays, Krishna, if you want, you can kill me. If you want, you can protect me. You can do anything you like to me. I am your eternal servant. I am yours. We just learn to take shelter of Krishna in whatever situation. Whatever's happening in this world doesn't matter when you go back to Godhead. Yes, you may have done something in the past that's not right, and it may be a scar on you in this world, but when you go back to Godhead, nobody cares. As soon as you go back, Krishna welcomes you and embraces you, and everything of this world is meaningless. The water contained in the hoofprint of the calf evaporates when you go back to Godhead. <laughs> There's nothing left, nothing to remember, nothing to regret. All there is, is Krishna, Sri Radharani, and all the devotees chanting the holy name. Yeah. echo of the immovable objects. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is the chance that we all have, always, at every moment. And Krishna, as time, he tells us how priceless every moment is. But still, because we don't get it, even within the moments we have, any moment in life is the perfect chance to become a perfect lover of Krishna. But then Krishna manifests himself at certain times to give certain benedictions at that time. John Mastami, Krishna, that's non-different than the day Krishna appears within this world. It's the murti of that occasion. Krishna is actually appearing on midnight on Janmashtami. It's not just some anniversary of a historical event. Yes? When we celebrate um, you know, 
um, Chhatrapati Shivaji's birthday. <laughs> it's a historical event. It's an anniversary that we remember him. And that's very nice. But Janmashtami, because Krishna's Janma karma cha me divya mevam yoveti tattvata. Because these are divine events, they're eternal, they're beyond time. John Mastami, Krishna has invested within that day the full benefits of being present in the prison of Kamsa at midnight. Or in the Goshala area of Mahaban Gokul when Krishna appeared to Yashoda and Nanda. It's happening. It's so beautiful. And Radhastami, at noontime, when Srimati Radharani appears. If you have the faith, if you have the right association, if you really take shelter of Radharani on that day, she will especially appear to you as she did in Mukyaravali or Ravel 5,000 years ago to Brishabhanu. Maharaj and Kirtida and Govardhan Puja. It's a special day. Yes, it's the anniversary of the day when Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill, but because it's divyam, it's transcendental, Krishna's actually, he's, he wants to show you that. Factually, he can appear to you or show you that, Radharani or Krishna, or lift Govardhan Hill on any day of the year, at any moment. But just to entice us, just, just to give us a special impetus, that day especially, like the murti of Krishna performing that leela. And then there's the month of Kartik, where any devotional activity you perform is multiplied by thousands of times. You're chanting of the holy names, you're going to a holy place, you're taking bath in a holy river, you're hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, you're rendering devotional service. It's all multiplied. Just see how merciful, what a Karuna Sindhu, <laughs> what an ocean of mercy. Such opportunities. Trying to in attract our hearts to become very serious and take advantage of this moment. And right at this very moment that we are living now is the month of Purushottam. Which month, this month, is non-different than Krishna. All the qualities of Krishna are within this month. That means if we just take shelter of Krishna within the time of this month, every moment is so sacred so impregnated with spiritual power and mercy. It's very rare. The rarest thing Krishna makes so available. And all we have to do is be sincere, open our hearts and be grateful to receive it. According to Padma Purana, In Nayama Sharanya, Shonakarishi was asking Sutta Goswami many questions. And in that conversation, Sutta Goswami described how once Narada Muni went to Badrik Ashram and there he met Lord Narayan. And he asked, how could Everyone attain the perfection of your loving service in this world. Whether they're householders living with their families or whether they're brahmacharis or sannyasis living in the forest or living in an ashram. And Badri Narayan told a story. He said, I want to tell you about a great opportunity that everyone has in this world to follow the Purushottam Vrat, 
Let me tell you the glories of this month. One time, Krishna came to Kamyavan to visit the Pandavas while they were in exile. We know the story how Duryodhana, who was such a envious person, cheated the Pandavas of their kingdom, tried to insult and strip naked Draupadi, their wife, and eventually, Draupadi and her five husbands were in exile, living in a forest. But Krishna loves his devotees so much, he came all that way to personally visit them. And he wanted to encourage them. He told them to follow the Purushaltam to worship him with all love and devotion during this month. And he explained, how this month, which is an extra month, it's not really a set place in the calendar. Every month has her own qualities. Yes, winter, in different places has winter qualities, summer, monsoon, rainy season, spring. But this um, extra month, every three years, it's just kind of been seen to be stuck in there. And it was at one time considered the most inauspicious time. It's like a month without, without a proper place. And everyone considered that this is very, very inauspicious. It's very unlucky. It was considered that the entire month is, uh, is highly contaminated. It's like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he transformed the, in, the so-called inauspiciousness of a lunar eclipse into the most auspicious of all times. So the personification of this Adikamas, this extra month, went to Vaikuntha and was crying to Lord Narayan, I'm completely blasphemed humiliated and shamed by everyone. No one likes me. I'm forced to appear every now and then and nobody wants me around. He was crying, please, give me shelter. So Lord Vishnu said, let us go to Goloka Vrindavan. Krishna will give you shelter. So they came to Goloka and Krishna was standing there with Sri Radharani and his flute. And he saw this extra month crying and crying and crying. And Krishna said to Vishnu, why is she crying? Vishnu explained. She took shelter of Krishna. She took shelter of Krishna with all her heart and all her soul in total desperation. And it is Krishna's promise, whoever takes shelter of me, I will give them all protection. He said, from this day on, this month, you, I will give you all protection. Not only that, I will invest within you all of my potencies, all of my beauty. You will be non-different than me. I will accept you as my own consort, and you will be non-different from me. And whoever takes shelter of me during this time when you prevail, I will surely give them very easily quick transport back home, back to Godhead. 
thousands and thousands and thousands of times more than any other month of the year, including even Kartik. I will bless people to fulfill their desires if they take shelter of me during the time when you reign. And therefore, you will be, this, you will from now on be known as Purushottamas, the month that is non different than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So she was very happy. And ever since then, all the sages and all the rishis and all people who understand this great secret, they increase their loving devotional service during this month. It is an opportunity. Factually, the opportunity is there at every moment of every day for all eternity within this world if we just take it. It's not that when Gajendra was in the clutches of the crocodile, he was thinking, I have to wait three years till Purushottam Mas. <laughs> then when I take shelter, everything will be very powerful. Oh. Krishna's present whenever... Krishna's fully present with all his opulences and his holy names any time we take shelter of him. But because our tendency is to take things for granted, Krishna gives special features and special opportunities. And as Goranga Prabhu was saying yesterday, he's like a good salesman gives certain bonus features. <laughs> Krishna gives very, very special opportunities just to take no moment is ordinary if we take shelter of Krishna, if we associate with devotees. But because we tend to take things ordinary, well, Kartik is extraordinary, so you can make a thousand times more advancement, just do it now. And Purushottam is very, very extraordinary, non-different than Krishna, do it now. And it's true. All these promises are facts. If actually any time you cry out Krishna's names with a sincere and prayerful heart, Krishna's there for you. But in our sadhana, in our practice, take the opportunity to, during these very, very special blessed months or blessed holidays, to really become accustomed to taking shelter of Krishna wholeheartedly. Because every moment of this month is so sacred and none different than Krishna. In Vrindavan, there are many temples. They consider every holy day of the year is simultaneously during every moment of Purushottamas. Janmastami, Radhastami, Gaur Purnima, Nityananda Trayodasi, Nursinga Chaturdasi, Varaha Dwadasi, Vamana Dwadasi, Govardhan Puja, Holi. The appearance days of all the great saints. So they, any time at any day, they just celebrate. It's like you'll go to one temple. Today, there's temple celebrating Radhastami. There's, telops, there's temple celebrating Sarat Purnima. It's not the full moon. It's not the month of Sarat. But factually, it is. Not only in Vrindavan, but even here. Because all the holy days, 
You could just worship any one of them and you get the full benefits because that day is not different than, than any time you celebrate it during Purushottamas. This is the... This is the principle of so many temples in Vrindavan. Such a holy month where Krishna makes himself so accessible to all of us. Just to give us this opportunity. If we bathe in a holy river in this month, if we chant the holy names with sincerity in this month, if we read the Srimad Bhagavatam or hear the Bhagavatam or the Gita or the Chaitanya Charitamrita or other bhakti scriptures, when we associate with devotees, render service to the devotees, everything the blessings, the rewards of bhakti that are bestowed upon us are immense. Una we are unable to calculate it. And Krishna gives us these opportunities just so that we will really focus our consciousness and attention on the reality that even once, if I just take shelter of Krishna, who's appearing in so many wonderful ways, Krishna will reveal himself. And all the tragedies and miseries and obstacles of material nature become insignificant, like that little calf hoofprint of water. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He came in this age of Kali to make the most difficult things the most simple. Previously, we read about sages meditating for 60,000s of years to somehow or other understand what is Krishna. In Treta Yuga, massive yagyas, impossible to perform today. In Dwarpa Yuga, the type of temple worship with such scrutinized proficiency and exactness and so much total rapt attention on everything we do at every moment. Can't do it. But in this age of Kali, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's inviting us to Goloka Vrindavan to be his eternal servants, his gopas or gopis in the spiritual world. And the price? Just be grateful. Focus your mind and take shelter of serving the Vaishnavas, sharing his beautiful message with others, and chanting the holy name. So why should we be so foolish on the basis of our petty little material attachments, whether they be of the mind or the body, that we create disturbances in our relationships with other devotees, which means factually that we create a disturbance between our relationship with Krishna Krishna wants us to, to see us respectful, to honor all living beings, and to cooperate with other devotees, and to create a family that will attract the world to the path of bhakti. That's what Prabhupada and Krishna expect of us. Why should our little false egos cheat us so tragically? to waste our time just trying to feed our own selfishness. We've been doing it for millions and millions of births and all it's done is cause us misery. And here Krishna is in the form of Radha Gopinath through the lips of Srila Prabhupada. And here we are 
as Janani Vas Prabhu said, packed in with so many devotees. In the month of Purushottam, Please let us take very seriously the great benediction. Just make the priority to be the servant of the servant of the servant. Be humble, cooperate, and really take, because in that mood only can we take shelter. You cannot be proud and take shelter. You have to be humble. You have to be in a service attitude to actually take shelter. Therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur said, simplicity is the first principle we have to accept to make real spiritual advancement. Because otherwise, even if we're following the five primary limbs of bhakti, chanting the holy names, worshipping the deity, living in a holy place, worshipping Tulsi, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, associating with devotees. These are the most five powerful things in all of creation because they award us love of God. But if we don't take shelter of these things, our progress is minimal. And in order to take shelter, we have to have a simple heart. We have to be humble. We have to really want to serve. Then naturally there will be cooperation, even in this age of Kali. And Krishna will manifest to us and attract our hearts forever because he is Karuna Sindhu. He is an ocean of kindness. And he has come in his holy names. This is a special new feature. Like an e delayed echo effect. Thank you very much.